Okay, so we're going to schedule this die graph on two processors, uh, using this priority list. And what we're using here is the list processing algorithm, which allows us to use a priority list to create a schedule. And so the first thing we're going to do is identify ready tasks. Ready tasks are tasks that have all their requirements already completed, uh, or that don't have any. And I'm going to mark those with a, just a circle here. And so notice that task 1, 3, 4, and 5 here are all ready because there's no prerequisite tasks. Over here, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to circle task 1, 3, 4, and 5, 1, 3, 4, and 5, uh, to mark that they're ready. So now I'm going to go ahead and assign my first task. So I'm going to assign the first task on the priority list to the first available processor. So I'm going to assign task 1 to processor 1, which takes 2 units of time. And task 3, I'm going to assign to processor 2, which also takes 2 units of time. Uh, to mark that I've started these tasks, started, I'm going to put a little slash through my circle here. So I've started task 1 and task 3. Now, I'm going to fast forward in time, and I'm going to say this is my now. So we're fast forwarding and imagining, okay, I'm 2 days into the project, what happens at 2 days into the project? Well, task 1 and task 3 both become completed, which I'm going to mark by putting a second x through task 1 and task 3. That way I know those requirements are done, right? Which means this requirement is done, this requirement's done, and that requirement's done. So now I can go ahead and identify any new ready tasks. So at this point, the only requirement for task 2 is done, and so task 2 becomes ready. But in terms of scheduling, I'm going to schedule the first thing on the priority list that's ready. So I'm going to schedule, assign task 4, uh, to processor 1, and task 5 to processor 2. So now we fast forward in time again, right? So now we're going to change our now to 3 units, uh, three, 3 days in, because that's when the next change happens. So at this point, task 4 becomes completed, and we look and say, are there any new ready tasks? And the answer is no, because all of these tasks still have task 2 as a prerequisite. So we go ahead and assign the next ready task. The next ready task is T2, so we're going to assign T2 to processor 1 here. And at 3.5, uh, that that task will complete. So again, we fast forward in time. At this point, we fast forward to 3.5 because at this point, again, the next change happens. And at this point, task 2, which we was ready, assigned, and now completed, is all done. And those prerequisites are done, and so now what's ready? Task 6 is ready, task 7 is ready, task 8 is not ready yet because Task 5 is yet to be completed. So now we'll go ahead and assign our next ready task, task 6. We'll assign to processor 1. So we'll go ahead and assign task 6 to processor 1, and that's going to get done at time 4. So when we fast forward now to time 4, what happens? Uh, at time 4, task 5 gets completed, task uh, what were we working on? Task 6 gets completed. And now we can go ahead and assign, uh, oh, and with task 5 getting completed, task 8 becomes ready. Now we can go ahead and assign the next two tasks on the priority list, which are 7 and 8, to processors 1 and 2. So we fin, uh, we assign both of those, and now our now moves ahead to time 4.5, where both of those tasks get completed. Task 9 becomes ready, and now we can assign task 9. And so assigning task 9 completes our schedule, and we have a finishing time of 5.5 days based on this priority list.